blessing to be in Yvonne Bonas, 196. Let us click our pages to the hymn.
Yeah, but it's better to humble ourselves before we move after him with an expectation of giving our heart. We thank you for this session that we're going to have, and we pray that the Spirit will lead us for this message as we will be living in the Holy Let me tell you this. When I came to know this, it really helped me in my 
system there. So trust me, you're gonna learn something. Uh, someone there, Luke chapter number 52 and verse number 31. Luke 22, 31. Yes. yes, yes. And the Lord said, yes, Simon. 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 Behold, uh -huh. Satan has desired to have you. Yes. That he may sift you as wheat. Uh -huh. But I have prayed for you. Yes. That thy faith fail not. Yes. And when thou art converted, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Strengthen thy brethren. This is the converted part I'm talking about. Kwa Kiswahili inaitwa kwa kof. And we have the, the first part of kokoka, which is the being saved. And maybe I may ask a question that I want to answer from you guys. If someone asks you what is the meaning of being saved, what do you answer? Because You'll be asked, are you saved? And you'll say yes. But what is the meaning of being saved? What will you answer? It's a question for you guys. Being saved, eh? I'll try. You just try. Being saved according to, I don't know if it's Mark 16, that says when you believe and you're baptized, then you'll be saved. So when I, I've believed in Jesus Christ and I've been baptized, then I'm saved. When uh, you believe in Jesus Christ and you get baptized, you are saved. Very correct. Very correct. Uh, then uh, Jesus came and told uh, Peter, My son, when uh, you will be converted, uh, Strengthen your brethren. At that point, was uh, was Peter saved? Yes, 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 yes. Now, nice, nice. I love it when people are thinking. Okay, was Peter saved? By the way, you said yes. You sure? Yes, another answer. When uh, Jesus came and they told uh, and they told uh, Peter that uh, when you will be converted, uh, strengthen your brethren. Was uh, Peter saved at that point? I, I just need another answer. I, I, no, okay, it might be the same answer. I just want to see the second person just answering. He, was he saved? You can just say, you can support her and uh, give the opposite answer. Was he saved? Yes, Elder. Mm -hmm. He was not saved. Ah, nice. Now, now this is a nice thing now. Because now we have to get one. Because uh, they are two. What was the meaning of being saved? Believing in Jesus and getting baptized according to what my sister answered, which is right and correct. Uh, now let me ask this question. Can someone be saved while and yet he is drinking? Yes, drinking. We are here, we are not drinking water. Drinking is drinking alcohol. Alcohol. Yes, I want an answer. And I want even an active class. <coughs> so that we, Elder will speak, so that we, we get the, the answer that we are looking for today. Then uh, trust me, at the end of this, it will change some people. Because uh, when I came to realize this, trust me, it changed me. And I know it will change someone. Elder, you were saying something. Excuse me, you have a... Excuse me, bro? Stand, stand. You wanted to speak something? 
El update, okay, nice. I wanted to know. So, uh -huh. Yeah, I just wanted to, to say this. Uh -huh. One can be saved and yet carry on bad habits with him. And that's why in the New Testament, there is a lot of uh, exhortations that we must change our departments, which means uh, positionally we are saved, but practically we are not saved as we are supposed to be. And that is why you get that there are people who do wrong things, they sin, but they are saved. And uh, once they realize this, they come out of it, and you see them changing radically day in, day out. Before you sit, and before you sit, I had asked a question about uh, Peter. I had asked uh, that uh, when Jesus was telling him, when you will be converted, meaning that he was not converted, isn't it? Yes. Was he saved? Peter was saved. So yeah. you, you changed now. Yeah, you changed. Because he was saved in the sense <laughs> that only his attitudes were not right mm -hmm. with what was intended to be. Thank you so much. So at least now we, we are going together now. We are going as one. Eh? Uh, <coughs> what is the meaning of being saved? And what is the meaning of being converted? And what is this process being uh, converted? The, the reality is that uh, when a Peter left everything behind and decided to follow Jesus, it means that he was saved. The way you've left everything behind, you've come to church, and you are a Christian and a, a devoted Christian, it means that uh, you are saved. But uh, after being saved, there is one thing that uh, is expected of you. People would like to see you and see the Jesus that you're talking about in you. And now we come to a process known as being uh, converted. What is the process, what is the meaning of this uh, being converted? When uh, someone is converted, by the being saved, we cannot see. And that's why I asked Elder, if uh, someone, uh, you had, uh, you wanted to say something? Uh, are you sure you won't forget? <coughs> Me, I want you to talk. <laughs> Was it the opposite of what Elder was saying? Because we want uh, someone to learn. You can just say it. Okay. Uh, it's just uh, the same thing. I would have said that uh, Peter was saved, yes, with a star. And uh, the issue be here is about uh, the syndrome that even Christianity has today, that... Uh, Getting saved simply means that there's a savior. So the savior's come, and you've learned about the savior, and you've believed about the savior. So accepting Jesus Christ simply means that you have accepted a fellowship with him, and therefore you are, a save, you are saved. And so uh, from the point, you know, at this time, Peter uh, was walking with Christ, and uh, he had left mm -hmm. all that he was taken from so that he can walk with Christ. But uh, as you know, I don't want to jump ahead because that's why I was telling my comment. But uh, I know it's the same syndrome that we have, that uh, it's the same question that you ask, that can someone be maybe, for example, coming to church, but then does not possess the Christianity in him. Mm -hmm. So there is, a, there is the standard that we all understand. When you come to Adventist church, we will take you to baptism or class. You learn the standard. Mm -hmm. But... There is a difference between learning the standard and learning the man of the standard. So when you learn from the man of the standard, that is when it is in the art. It is not in the mind. So when it is in the art, it is something that comes naturally out of you. But when it is in the mind, you understand the standard and you can explain it so well, but it is not deep in your art. 
Yeah, th thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, in short, uh, what we are saying here, the first process is getting saved. Believing in Jesus and uh, welcoming him into your life. Then when Jesus comes, he will start now changing you. That process is what we call being converted. You will find that uh, you loved uh, drinking a lot, but you feel like uh, the urge is no longer there. Why? And there is a question that even no one has ever answered. How, how, how does it happen that uh, when a person receives Jesus, his life starts to change, to change without, without even anyone monitoring him or her? How comes, how does it happen? Uh, to the point uh, that uh, Peter was with Jesus, he was not converted. His behaviors, his behavior was not changed yet. And when Jesus saw it, and he told him that, uh, my child, when you, when you get converted, meaning that he was not converted, just strengthen your brethren. So it means that even their brethren, his brethren were not converted also. But these people had walked with Jesus. These people had eaten with Jesus. They were together with Jesus. And uh, maybe they spent a lot, a lot of time with Jesus, but uh, they were not yet converted. But when God saw them, he knew that uh, there is something that was supposed to be done to them so that he may leave them alone. And that's why when Jesus is going to be killed, when the day comes for Jesus to die, uh, Jesus, uh, he, 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 he thought that, okay, he knew, but uh, at least the disciples were supposed to be there to strengthen him. But uh, everyone ran away. It means that uh, the, indeed they were not converted yet. What do we learn from that? That in, uh, in this journey of Christianity, it is a journey that we grow each and every day. We grow each and every day. The mistakes that we Christians do is that uh, we want uh, our lives to be changed today. You want to, you finish school today, you get a job today. After getting a job, you get married today. You, 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 you get a good house today. It can't happen. Things happen in a process that are, they're supposed to follow. When you invite Jesus, when you get baptized and you believe in him, when now he comes to your life, let him do the changes alone. Another mistake that we do is that uh, we want to change ourselves. It can't happen. It can't happen. Let Jesus change you according to the way he wants. And that's why you will get uh, that uh, there are many promises that we make, many of them. Many. You say that, uh, by the way, God, I will not do this. I will not do this and this and this. But at the end of the day, you find yourself that uh, you are even worse. You are even worse than uh, read, uh, read the book of uh, Matthew. 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 I want to finish this and then uh, I invite comments and uh, questions. Matthew 12 verse... Uh, Verse 44. Yes, 1244. That's what it says, huh? Yes. Then it, it, it says, mm -hmm. I will return to the person I came from. That is 44? Yeah. Okay, start 43. 43 says, mm. 
When an evil spirit leaves a person, yes, it goes into the desert, yes, seeking rest but finding none. Uh -huh. Then it says, "I will return to the person I came from." Mm -hmm. So it it returns and finds its former home empty, mm -hmm. swept, and in order. Then the spirit finds seven other spirits more evil seven. than itself, mm -hmm. and they all enter the person. And they live there. And so that person is worse off than before. That will be the experience of this evil generation. Thank you so much. Those are, that is where we make a mistake. When uh, we try to change ourselves. It can't happen. It can't happen. So I may ask another question. Uh, we have come to realize that uh, someone can be saved and yet uh, is drinking. You know, if we leave it there, someone will say that, okay, so I can drink, okay. And then uh, what is supposed to be done? A question comes. What is, uh, what is the work of uh, good deeds? Or what role does good deeds act in salvation of someone? being saved, good works. What is the role of good works in salvation? Ama, to be simple, precise, does the good works have any role in salvation? Yes, I want now, yes, the new faces. I want new faces to answer. I would like uh, Madam to say something, then Elder, you say something. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I just want to say that good works do not have a role in our salvation, but they are a product of our, our, our salvation. Or they reveal to the world that we are, we are saved. Because we are saved. Salvation is a gift of God. Mm -hmm. We don't do anything to, to get it. We do not deserve it in the first place. Mm -hmm. By grace, we are saved through faith. We do nothing, eh? but once we have been saved, saved, eh? good works are a response mm -hmm. to our. Um, now they become part of us because uh, when we have Christ living in us, eh? it's not now us living; eh? it is Christ that living. lives in us, and Christ living us will, uh, his, his character will come out, eh? and his character now are the fruits of. The fruit of the spirit, which is good works, eh? yeah. and as much as uh, they do not have a part in our salvation, eh? it is the works that are going to judge us at the end of the day, because God is calling us to obedience, obedience of His commands. Eh? We cannot love Him eh? because our response to uh, the gift that He has given us is to love Him, eh? and when we love Him, we obey Him. When we obey him, we do the good works. Thank you. Uh, actually, she has said what I wanted to say. And let me just say, when there is an avocado tree, it doesn't have to tell people I'm a what? Me, I'm avocado tree. But when the fruits come forth, you can see this is a what? An avocado. So you don't, you don't, you don't, the opposite doesn't become it. That you first get the fruits, then you know it's a what? Avocado. You know it's avocado because of the fruits that are coming out of it. So the good works that we are doing, we don't do anything good. Because actually, Bible describes these things we, we consider as good works as what? as filthy rags, yeah? But what it is telling us is, this works now comes out of us as a manifestation of what has worked inside us. So if there's nothing inside, yeah? Today, you may call nani? Nanini? Ukiwa na malaria, what will happen to you? Is it possible upate gideri? 
ukaenda kutapika mali unaanza kutapika gideri so what is inside is what comes outside you know the, the reasons to you want to say something back to what we are saying eh? yes uh, the book of uh, i know there are many uh, scriptures okay. that uh, support that but i want us to read the book of colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 the bible says if then you were raised with christ eh, seek those things which are above mm -hmm. where christ is sitting at the right hand of god eh? set your mind on things above not on things on the earth for you died and your life is hidden with christ in god when christ who is our life appears then you also will appear with him in glory when christ becomes our life our life will definitely be changed you know when we are talking of salvation we have in mind the great controversy we have in mind the, the 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 battle for uh, good and between good and and evil so uh we when we get saved eh, it is not automatic uh I'm, I'm sorry to say that many of us think that things will just flow that now i i confess that i am saved eh, and i go and sleep and things will be okay no they, we are in a battle if we are in we are going to war Will you just sit and you win the battle? You will not. You have to fight. So what is the part or what is the part of a believer? The believer is to connect with God in prayer and in study of the word. To know where to stand. To know what to, uh, which way to follow. So that you are not overcome. Otherwise, if we will um, put aside uh, our, our, our part... Uh, and, and say now that Christ has done everything, I'm going to, uh, to, to succeed. We are going to fail terribly. We have a part to play. Once we have been saved and we have come, we have acknowledged him, we have joined the battle. Because the battle has not ended. It will end when Christ shall come. And uh, uh, salvation does not begin and end at, uh, at us meeting Christ. It began, it continues, as our uh, speaker is saying, and it will we finally um, come to a conclusion at glorification when our Lord comes. Okay. So what are these things that we are supposed to do? Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. What are these members that are on the earth that war with the spirit? Those are the things of the flesh that war with the spirit, and those are the ones that cause us to, um, to be um, overcome. What are these fornication, uncleanliness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry? Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. That is why I brought in the issue of obedience and also um, the, the, uh, the issue of uh, um, you know, worrying you know, all the time being connected uh, with God. And at the end of the day, having in mind that we are going to be judged how we live. That is uh, what is going to be uh, to determine if we have been overcoming, then we will overcome at the end. But if we, we are not expecting to overcome at the end, if now we are not living a victorious life, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I love the way you are. So we have two hands. I'll give you a chance. By the way, I have less than uh, 28 minutes. So when you speak, uh, consider my time also. The reason as to why, as I give, I will give uh, Madame there and then uh, Elder will speak. The, the reason as to why I asked this uh, is that uh, there is a person I was talking to and I was uh, asking him, why don't you give your life to Jesus? Uh, what are you waiting for so that uh, you give your life to Jesus? Then he told me that uh, he is waiting. He is waiting to stop uh, drinking. No, it was cigarette. By the way, the problem was uh, smoking cigarette. He told me by the way, this thing, uh, I don't think I have uh, I will continue well if I decide to 
receive Jesus today. Then he told me now, Mtumishi, I want to deal with this thing first so that, uh, so that uh, I may receive Jesus again. We walk together. You see, according to him, what he was talking about is that uh, there is something, there are some good works he needed to do. There's something that he needed to do before receiving Jesus. Ama, what do you think? I think, Madam, okay, Elder, because you can mic, you can just speak in the Madam Mule. Yeah, thank you very much. What I wanted to say here is that um, <coughs> we have always what we call humanism. Elder, how it's, many minutes am I going to give you? Give me two and a half or three. Uh, sir. Yes. All right. Yeah, we have what we call humanism. Yes. That's where when we get somebody who is not converted yet, who is not even saved, but it does very good works. You get a man yeah. in his home, he can help people, he can give food, he can do all those things, but he's not converted. One might even uh, confuse him to be a saved person. Yes. This is what we call humanism. It is there. Mm -hmm. But the humanism does not lead one always into salvation. And that's why I said, as my brothers and sisters have spoken, is that uh, the problem we have is trying to do things to gain acceptance of God. That is where we go wrong. Uh, it's not our works that can uh, induce or entice God to save us. God saved us in our situation of sinfulness. Yes. And once he did that, now when we are saved, the outcome of our salvation is the good deeds. And those good deeds now are prompted by the spirit in us, not the old spirit of the devil who was giving us bad e or evil things. So the important, the important thing is that works cannot help, mm -hmm. but this, uh, the, the faith can help. And once save, you, 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 you have faith, now this faith is being prompted by the spirit in you, and then you produce good, good works. And these good works are the ones which God loves. Not our own. I, I just love uh, what you've answered. In fact, uh, okay, everything was okay, but I love the way you've uh, put it. Because uh, that this is an outcome. It is an outcome after receiving Jesus. And that's why when you read uh, Ephesians 2 verse 10, it says that uh, Kumbe, even the good works that we do, even the good works that we do, they're not ours. They're not ours. It is God. Yes. Uh, and uh, for this reason, you know, I've brought this because uh, there is someone here who is trying to, to do something that is not working out in his or her life. Yet you are after maybe there is something, there is a sin you are struggling with. And uh, because now you think uh, things are not working out, you are like even you feel like losing hope because uh, you think even uh, it is wa it was meant to be yours. But we are told that uh, yours, yours, is not to fight whatever you are doing. Yes, yours is to surrender. How? In imagine, <coughs> imagine. And this is, by the way, let me tell you guys. Going to heaven, it's so easier than even the way you think. And that's why when Jesus will come again, and you will realize this, friends, people will just cry. And they will say that, I wish I knew. Because trust me, there is no day that sin will end in this world. Even, the, even when Jesus will come, Yes, even when Jesus will come, there are people, in, the Bible says, there is no one who thrashes. Is it true? And it's indeed there is no one. But uh, why are we told that we should be as pure as God? What we are supposed to do is to surrender. Our work is to surrender. Our work, when you surrender, you give Jesus an easy time to work in you. You give him an easy time to work in you. The problem
problem comes that you want to be a better person, you want to play a role, and at the same time, Jesus wants to help you. Trust me, those people cannot work together. Let me ask you a question. I, I, you, have, I, you are supposed to speak, eh? All right. Let me ask you a question. Uh, maybe I, uh, you know how to swim, eh? You know how to swim. And uh, there is a friend that you have who doesn't know how to swim, eh? And you are in a boat and it collapses and uh, people are just there and uh, you want to help this person so that uh, he may not die. You know how to swim? He doesn't know how to swim. What will you do? What will you do? Is the question clear? You want to help him so that he may not drown or die. And uh, he doesn't know how to swim. What are you supposed to do? Because this thing applies directly to your Christianity. Someone who has a say. So you, oh, okay. Hey, who has a mic? Ah, nice. What will you do? You want to help him so that he may not die. Just panic. Panic and do anything to save him. What will you do? I don't know how to oh. swim, so yes. Hillary will answer. <laughs> this is not fair. <laughs> it's, it's, it's never fair. Uh, you, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Yeah, it's never fair. It, uh, from, from my swimming experience, Mm. I really like swimming. You, so you know how to swim? Yeah, I know how to swim. You are an ex experienced swimmer. Yeah, I, I, I like I swimming. would like to hear your answer. Just uh, please do it. Please, and be careful. You give a good answer. Just, uh, all right, go ahead. Okay, so uh, this person is uh, here. He's almost, uh, he's going to sink, actually. Yes, yes. And he's going to die. Because he doesn't know yeah, how to swim. because ah, sure. it just takes a few minutes for him to go down. Sure. Yeah, and he, and he's gone. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so bad, and, so bad. Uh, yeah, and minding that uh, this person can also make uh, me die as well. Good, yeah. good. I, I love, you are a, indeed, you are a swimmer. That is nice. Yeah, there is a way if you hold this person while uh, you try to, to save them along, uh -huh. you can also die with them. Very true. Yeah, so that is from experience, eh? Yeah. Uh, so there is a specific way in which you're supposed to hold him. Which way? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> just let me, let, let all right, me come all on. Right, all right. So uh, there's a way you need to hold this person. And uh, if you find that the weight of this person is too much for you, mm -hmm. you call for others to help as you try to help. So you don't uh, move alone. Uh, so I don't pull this person alone. I will call others to come and help as I try to make mm -hmm. myself float with them. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, I really love this point that he knows. In the process of helping him, he might also die. In fact, ikohivu kabisa kabisa. But now, hajamalizia jibu. But I love that. Thank you so much, my brother. Anyone with a, with a say? Please give the elder the mic. I, I remember, you will speak, eh? Purely from the swimming experience. You have one? Those of us who live by the lake. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Pole. What? <laughs> if somebody falls in the water, uh -huh. particularly if it's not moving water, don't jump on him. Uh -huh. You must let him take that water first uh -huh. until he becomes helpless. Uh -huh. Because if you jump on him when he's still having energy, he will hold you, you will both sink. Mm -hmm. So you don't jump. swimming pool, Then Ruka, kama sasa unajua, is now 
there yes. then unamtoa vizuri unamlaza akiwa amelala hivyo unampress from the back anatoa hiyo maji Ma, hiyo maji inatoka finally sawa mm. so usibothe usi ati oh atakunywa maji atakufa no hiyo maji hayatamuua so we don't we don't jump on somebody who is just fallen on on water mm-hmm. you must wait relax then ndio unamtoa alafu bila unamweka thank you uh, paul is saying something in this book of uh, galatians so you wanted you wanted comment eh? yeah. <laughs> and before you comment uh, because you have the mic uh, me want to talk a lot yani elder has given the perfect answer nankashangaa tuna check but uh, that is it that is it if you try to help someone who's try to help himself you'll all die that was my brother what my brother said that uh, you can even die in the process so the best way to do it is what the elders told us you just wait him he drinks enough water key point until he becomes helpless when he is helpless you can hold him as a leaf eh yani you can just unaza you can you can uh, pull him with a you, the finger eh you can just pull him then when you get to the show utamtapisha and uh, he, he will he will be okay thank you so much that's what i wanted i forget a lot and let me say this before i forget then you 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 comment whatever you wanted the same applies in our christian journey when you are trying to help yourself the lord will leave you to do it on your own when you are trying to help you help you to help yourself till you reach a point that you say indeed i am helpless uh, uh, there is nothing that i can do again and that's the point when you call god he will come and work it in you the same way two drivers cannot drive a vehicle two drivers cannot drive a vehicle it's one at a time even in your life you cannot compete with god there is something that the lord is doing and you are there you're struggling to do another thing who told you that even samson whatever that he, he did see it was stupid ama was it okay whatever samson did was it okay to the parents but see we were told it is the will of who it was the will of god samson to do whatever that he did at times you don't know what is happening in your life but what you are supposed to do you are supposed to surrender unless you surrender you will continue fighting your life forever and i'm telling you you're going to lose it how do we surrender take an example or of a, of a soldiers maybe a country is fighting with another, another country and uh, when uh, one country maybe a soldier is uh, is taken captive maybe ama by chance wakamshika and uh, the other people wanaenda this person anabaki hapa he will be like a slave eh whatever ni kama kitambo people were sold as slaves eh so whoever bought you will be your master and whatever he will tell you you have to do it then you will be like a will be like a, a robot whatever you are told to do you just do it you just cooperate if he tells you do your head you just go anything and that's what is required because jesus purchased us with his blood we are supposed to cooperate with him but this can never happen if we have not surrendered you have been praying god to change your life and the lord has never changed you it means there is something that is not right with you there is something that you've not done yet and that's why you are struggling that much what is that now may you change your prayers instead of uh, asking god to 
change you ama help you change yourself or anything ask god to help you that you may allow jesus to come to your life let him do it for himself he knows how to do it best and trust me if it happens you will see victory in jesus name elder comment whatever you wanted to say i give madam then i give some few people we call it a day thank you so much what sa kumi ay 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 sa kumi mnena departmental isn't it so thank i have you. exactly 11 minutes fine right. let me say this all right uh in the process of helping others yes i know people who have gone out to help others and they have gotten lost in the process you are sure a lot of people sure, sure. in this many, life many and and that's why the, the 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 analogy of swimming comes in a lot of people don't be a bible argumentator if you find somebody that with whom you are doing bible study but they are very very argumentative and they quote a lot of things which are irrelevant please avoid them avoid them this is what the this is what paul, paul is saying mm -hmm. brethren in in the book of galatians 6 verse 1 he says brethren if a man is overtaken in any trespass you who are spiritual restore such a one in spirit of gentleness considering yourself lest you also be tempted then he says bear one another's burden and he fin then then i jump because of time let him who is taught the word share in all the good things with him who teaches iyo nimeruka nimekuja 6 what I'm saying here is this, please, when you go out to share the word of God, I know how sometimes it thrills when you have, con when you have received Christ, you want to go peep to people, and please, if you find those who are so argumentative and, 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 and want things done the, their way, please be very careful, lest you also be a victim. Thank you. By the way, whatever you are saying is true, because uh, at our church, I am the assistant uh, AMR leader. And my leader, my leader, the one who was going to church board and uh, those stuff, is not in church anymore. It's less than a year and he's not in church. Today they have gone. Many of my fellow teachers whom we teach with, they are no longer in church today because of what elder is talking about so be very careful your time yes i had a question from oh. the beginning but oh. after your explanation yes there is something i have learned okay but uh, on top of that you have said um, that after being saved mm -hmm. someone becomes converted yes after conversion you see, there is this process of conversion, but at some point, mm -hmm. someone uh, reaches a point whereby uh, they become helpless. Yes. And then now they decide to let go and let God. So after you let God in, mm -hmm. does it mean now you are righteous? Can mm -hmm. we say now this is righteousness by faith? Or how can you explain? Okay, thank you so much. Thank That's you. a good question. Thank you so much, my sister. I will say something and someone else will say something. But uh, when uh, we are told by the Bible that, that we should be righteous, my friend, uh, with this body of yours, you will never be righteous. You will never be. But uh, when you accept Jesus, when you accept Jesus, the righteousness of Christ now is imputed in your life. When the Lord uh, sees you, he does not see you, he sees Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is in you. And that is what we are supposed to do. Uh, you had something to say. Are you okay, by the way? 
okay you are, you are not righteous by your own but when you have Jesus in you you are a righteous your righteousness is imputed from the righteousness of Jesus somebody once taught us and said that Daniel was going to the temple yes and he was praying in the morning afternoon and evening so when he he does things which are not right he seeks the presence of god and tells god i really need you forgive me mm -hmm. so once god forgives you even if you go somewhere and you got an accident definitely you are righteous and you will go to heaven okay that is with god but ellen white says make sure before you sleep you confess every sin that you've done and uh, the most important thing understand this is having jesus in your life when you have jesus in your life it counts it all it counts it, it counts it all elder say something i could be time was moving so fast yeah but the uh, time is of god and we are of god uh, what I wanted to say about my sister before I comment on what I said, it is true. God is not an opportunist. God does not wait until you are in a corner and then he says, now off you go. God gives you a chance. And once he has given you a chance, he, the Holy Spirit in you now moves you to say something. Not even as uh, my, my brother who just decides to ask for forgiveness every night. It is the spirit in you which tells you who tells you that you do this. Yes, sure. And when you talk according to the spirit of the Lord, you mention what is the intention of God and you are saved that way. Now, another thing I wanted to say is about uh, the surrendering. Surrendering is another difficult thing sure. altogether. If you look at this phenomenon of surrendering, it's so difficult. How do I surrender to God? It becomes somehow tough, but with the help of the Holy Spirit, we are able to do it, not on our own, but the, 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 the Spirit. Let me read one book here, then we, I do, I wait. It's about Romans chapter 10, which we start from uh, verse, uh, verse 9. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, yeah. and that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you converse with your mouth, that Jesus is Lord, mm -hmm. and believe in your heart That's that God raised him from the dead, mm -hmm. you will be saved. For it is by f believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by conversing with your mouth that you are saved. As the scriptures say, tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentile are the same in this respect. Now, another th issue here is, the, but how can they call on him to save them mm -hmm. unless they believe in him? Yes. And how can they believe in him uh -huh. if they have never heard about him? Mm -hmm. And how can they hear about him yes. unless someone tells them? Mm -hmm. And how will anyone go and tell them yes. without being sent? Mm -hmm. That is why the scripture say, how beautiful are the feet of the messenger who brings good news. So it is by, uh, it's actually by hearing the word of God and by hearing now, you will be saved. You cannot hear it if somebody who is not sent to you is of himself or is not from God. God sends somebody to you to bring a message which can convert you. So it's not about us. It's God himself who now sends you a messenger and that messenger when he talks about god on uh, for you then you are able to accept without anything you can be able to surrender without any uh, struggle Thank but you. if you struggle on yourself to surrender my brother my sister <laughs> it's difficult you can never surrender thank I, you i hope uh, i hope there is no one no one is speaking again thank you because i've not seen a hand let me now finish my let me make my conclusion in less than around 10 minutes friends let me tell you that uh, yes surrendering is not easy and we human beings we don't love surrendering 
we don't love. We love self so much. And that's why when you are told that you surrender today, it will be the greatest task that are, has been given to you. A question may come then, what are we supposed to do if surrendering is not easy? And what I will tell you is that uh, surrendering is not as a whole. You surrender day by day. You surrender par bit by bit. You tell God, help me to surrender this. And at, at the end of one year, you will see something. It, within you surrendering, you won't see anything. You even lose hope, maybe. But if you know what is uh, what you are doing, at the end of a given time, you will see the fruits of surrendering. Friends, if we understand this, that uh, we are all struggling while we are going to heaven, you will never judge a person. You will never judge anyone in this world. In fact, uh, let me tell you that uh, the church is like a hospital. A hospital full of people who are sick. A question may be asked. What if you see someone with dreadlocks and uh, well, he's drunkard coming to church? What will you do as a Christian? Not even what you'll do. What will you think on your own? What will you say on your own? Think about that. But I'm telling you, if you understand that we are all struggling, you will never judge someone. You will never judge someone's daughter because of what she did. You will never judge someone's son because of what he did. The, then Jesus said, leave them in charge. They are not good, yes, just leave them. I will come and choose on my own. I know the criteria that I will use. There was a pastor in Tanzania who was uh, baptizing and there is a guy who was struggling with smoke, smoking. Then uh, the day of baptism all came, and uh, the guy wanted uh, also to be baptized. But uh, he was a serious addict. By the way, when you see someone drinking, you don't know what he's going through. You don't know what he's going through. Let me go to another story, and then I will come back to this. There is a pastor that I know who is, is, is youth eh? and uh, he loves to associate himself with the youth. And uh, one day he went and they found the youth. Uh, they, were, they were injecting themselves cocaine. Eh? But the cocaine is so addictive. Eh? So when uh, he, just, he was just watching them, the first one, Alikona Jidunga Sindano, and then he feels good and then he leaves. That the third boy, he realized something different. Because when uh, he was injecting himself the cocaine, he, he was doing it while crying. He wondered why is it that way and yet others are happy. He didn't ask him anything. He went uh, and tomorrow he met him and he asked him, I saw something in you. Yesterday, you were crying. What was the reason? Then he told him, Pastor, let me tell you. It pains me a lot because I know the effects of what I'm doing. It pains me a lot because uh, I know what is awaiting for me, Pastor. I know I know that I'm digging my own grave with what I'm doing today. And the biggest thing and problem is that I cannot stay without using it. And when I'm doing it, I'm not happy at all. I'm not happy at all. But I only just do it because I can't live without it. Then I'm telling you, when you see someone drink, drunk at um, anything else, um, any kind of sin, do not judge him. And this is where Christian, we've gone a mess. Instead of taking time to talk about someone's problems and the sins and anything, may we take time to pray for them because they need us. You don't know, you don't know the struggles they are going through. You don't know how much is willing to be a better person. You don't know how much is willing to stop drinking. Do not judge them. 
when you see them, just play with them. The day of baptismal came. And this guy was a serious addict of smoking cigarettes. And that day, he had even smoked. Then, uh, then uh, he, th there is a place, if he has not finished, there is a place he could hide the, the remaining cigarette around the church, but outside the compound. So he was, uh, 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 I think, the tenth person, around tenth. Then when he, he went uh, nearer to the pastor, he told me, he told him, Pastor, I need to tell you something. Uh, I am a serious addict of cigarette. And even now, as you are going to baptize me, I want to be sincere. Nina kiu ya kuvuta sigara ajap. Nina kiu kubwa sana. Then, uh, then the pastor told him, do you have any around? Then he said, yes. There is a, a small bit that remained in the morning while I was come and I have hidden somewhere. He told him, go and finish it. And I come. He went, people were just watching. They wondered what is happening. He went and he told him, I want you to be the last person I will baptize. Then he went. He finished whatever he was doing. And when he was coming, the deaconess and deaconesses had the smell of by the camera there is something you can't hide it is cigarette the smoke of cigarette then they were like hey umeski we umeski umeski they were yeah, so they were murmuring everyone had been baptized and uh, it came to a point that uh, this man was uh, getting baptized then the pastor asked him have you done it then he told him yes but the deaconess asked, told pastor, Pastor, do you feel anything? Do you? You are rufu unaisikia? Then uh, the pastor told, told them just to relax. Then he prayed for him. And friends, let me tell you, the pastor baptized him. And now as I'm speaking, I don't know how long was it. I, told, I was told he's a serious elder in that church. And Kumbe, that was the last time he ever smoked. When you see people are struggling, when you see people are drunkard, when you see people are doing all sorts of nonsense, do not judge them. The world has beaten them. The world has eaten them. Do not eat them also. You are the only hope that they have. May you receive them for Christ's own sake, that they may also attain their entry to heaven. And may the Lord bless you. May we start and pray. Our gracious Lord in heaven, thank you again because uh, we have heard you speaking, Lord. Thank you because we have come to realize, Kumbe, our own deeds have nothing to do with salvation. That salvation is free and it's a free gift. Thank you for he helping us to, re to know that uh, even the good deeds that we are doing, they are not ours. They are yours. Kumi, in this journey of Christianity, it is you and you alone. Thank you for loving us. And despite of our sinful nature, you have not killed us that you've given us another day, that we may make our lives better again. Lord, we pray that uh, as we've learned, uh, may you help us to surrender. May we uh, have that urge of welcome, welcoming Jesus to our lives so that he may transform us. We need to be transformed. We are not happy in sin. Lord, this thing is killing us. This thing is eating us each and every day. We, we, we dedicate ourselves to you, Lord, that uh, please, may Jesus, your son, has an, uh, get an entry into our lives that he may change us, Lord. Thank you for the members of the Gong Road SDA Church. Lord, may you bless them. They are good people. May you stand with them. 
may you take care of the elders who are leading these people. And above all, Lord, may you stand with them in whatever they are praying for. Thank you because uh, you sent me. I have done my best. Where I went wrong, I'm begging that may you forgive me. But above all, Lord, may you help us to surrender fully to you. That uh, Jesus may come to our lives and change us so that our good works may glorify your name. People might see our good works and I love you and know you even better. Thank you because I know you are listening to us. Thank you because I know you are going to do something. For this is my humble prayer. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May, may the Lord bless you. I'm so grateful, guys. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, I, 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 I think... Uh, Bless you. I don't know. Then you welcome. I don't know. Then you tell us the way forward. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath and a happy day. Uh, I hope we are blessed, right? So most of us are very, very asleep. Very much asleep. I can be able to tell from the look of the eyes. But uh, I hope we are blessed either way. It has been a, a wonderful week. And uh, sincerely, we must appreciate your support as the church and uh, the youth as well. May the spirit of our good Lord be imbued in us to help us be strong even or through. Uh, I'm not seeing the elder on duty. But uh, I would like, maybe before we part for departmentals, as we usually do, I would like to invite the elder, please, please, just, just please come. So that he will, uh, he will guide us on the next uh, thing we can do, but maybe... Uh, so thank you. Before we part for departmentals, I would like to thank everyone who has been part of us through this uh, week. To our guest speaker, thank you for sparing your time. We know you are a man of a, a PC schedule, but you spent your time to be with us, and we sincerely are so grateful. From the youth ministry and uh, the department of the young adults, we want to thank the church. Thank you for all those who attended our meetings through the week. They were so awesome. We learned a lot. And uh, sincerely, we must thank you, especially to our parents, to the church leadership, and to everyone who gave us support. Uh, to that far end, we want to appreciate even to the guests who came along with our guests and to all those who were invited and were part of us through this day. May the Lord bless you. As I now take this opportunity to invite our elder, he will guide us on the next uh, uh, on what we need to do next, and then we'll be inviting our guest to say uh, his words of grace and maybe to thank us before we part for the departmentals and others follow. May God bless you. A happy day. I think it has been a happy Sabbath, and uh, we have enjoyed uh, being with God. And it has reached a time that uh, we are about to go to departmentals. And uh, since we don't have uh, anything after departmentals, I think I want to take this opportunity to 
invite our speaker to just come and uh, uh, say something and maybe give us a uh, say word of praise and then we can uh, move into our departmentals. Yes, praise God. I don't have much to say. Uh, by the way, this time I didn't meet uh, with uh, any elder uh, to give me greetings or anyone. But uh, when I was coming on the first day, I found like uh, three elders in church and uh, they told me to bring their greetings. Do you accept them? And uh, as I, I'll be in, I think I'll be in our church next uh, Sabbath. Shall I take your greetings there? Thank you so much. I want to thank you in a special way. I was happy uh, kwa kutumika katika maeneo haya and I will wish you all the best in life. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he keep you till we meet again in Jesus' name. Thank you. I don't have anything else to say. Maybe we say, the, okay, we start. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much. Did you enjoy the, the way they were singing? Next time you call me, I will come with them again. Ha, 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 ha.